Happy Monday, everyone. Okay, hope you guys are all well rested after the whole action pack week from the several monetary policy um, meetings last week. Okay, so today I will be sharing a trade idea with you guys. Now, this trade idea, well, wow, it's a long, long time ago kind of a trade idea. Eurocat, eyes on the Canadian jobs report. Well, this trade idea was actually published um, back in 3rd of June. Okay, it's like some three months ago. Okay, um, you know what? Let's just jump straight into um, the chart. All right. So this is actually a straddle setup. Okay, straddle meaning that um, price was moving within a tight range. Okay, for a period of time, and um, the market is just waiting for something to happen. You know, be it a a major economic data release, um, major central bank announcement, major political news happening announcement, something like that, all right? Before um, making a decision, before the market makes a decision on um, which direction to take, right? So as you can see from this chart here, this is actually on a <clears throat> daily Time frame. Okay, so this purple region over here is actually the range that I've highlighted out. It's a some two hundred pips range. Well, okay, you guys may think that two hundred pips is like wow, it's so wide. But keep in mind that this is actually an, on a daily time frame. Okay, so two hundred pips for a daily time frame. You know, over a period of twenty one trading days, three weeks, is actually not a lot to be honest. Okay, so okay. If you guys are not convinced, you know, we can also use our indicators, the Bollinger Bands. So as you can see that, you know, the Bollinger Bands are actually, I would say, converging, okay, towards a point and, you know, it kind of like there's a squeeze around this region over here, okay, a Bollinger squeeze. That's the phenomenal, there's a name for the phenomenal over here, okay. So it actually indicates that um, price are actually, I would say, floating across, across okay, ranging across you know, just waiting for something to happen before making a decision on which direction the market should go on, right? So, um, this trade idea actually took, I think, one month to actually trigger, okay? So, it was fired out on, <clears throat> I think it was June, right? Oh, I say it was June, yeah, early June. And it only got triggered on, um, when is this, July, August, uh, 8th of July, okay, like this green, uh, this green bullish candle over here. So as you can see, this green line over here, this green dotted line is actually my entry point, okay. So once it got triggered, I actually placed my stop loss below this um, straddle um, pattern over here, okay. So it's actually a 250 pip stop loss, okay. And then I actually set a TP at this level over here, which is around 250 as well, 300, okay. So, um, well, I'm not going to go through the whole, you know, what happened throughout the whole period of time. But as you can see, you know, it went up, came back down, went up, came back down. Close, coming close to the TP level. Okay, at this point, I would like to highlight something. Um, personally, I will keep my trade um, on, okay, before it actually hits TP. But um, on your end, okay, if you guys actually take up these trade ideas and even for, you know, future trade ideas that you guys plan to take up, okay, um, you guys don't have to wait for the trade to hit the TP level, okay, before realizing the profits, okay. I mean, like on high sides right now, I think it's a good it's a good time for me to highlight this point to you guys, okay. At this level, okay, let me just mark it up. <clears throat> if you mind, um, I think it's one point five zero, one point five one. I think one point five one. <clears throat> now. On high side, okay, we can see that there were two tests um, on the 1.51 key level, round level, psychological level, you know, round figure level, however you want to call it, before, you know, it fails to reach above this level, right? So on high side, we can see that there's actually two rejections. But, you know, at that point of time, if you guys were to take up this trade and realize that trade, um, the price was actually testing this 1.51 level, okay, what you guys can do is, you know, although this trade is being fired out on a daily time frame, um, yeah, on daily time frame, okay, you guys can actually 
um, you know, just be aware that it's testing 1.51 level and actually go down to a lower time frame like H4 or H1 and check to see if, um, you know, price is actually planning to, well, if there's a strong conviction, okay, to price breaking above this 1.51 level. Okay, so if let's say we would go to H4, now, you can see these two over here, okay, these two region over here are actually the, the test and um, rejected, okay, um, attempts. So you can see that, you know, on H4 candles over here, the first attempt, it tested, but it came back down. The candle closes as a bearish candle, okay, and obviously it failed to um, break above this level, right? So if that's the case, you guys may want to close your trade to secure the profit instead of waiting you know, for the trade to actually go off or rather hit the TP level, which is some probably 100 pips away. Okay. Now, if you guys were to miss this chance, the second chance would be over here. The second attempt, you know, it tested, but it failed to break again. And then it hovers across and it come back down. So um, yeah, you know, in the future, you know, you guys can make it a bit more flexible, okay? I know you guys, I mean, for like long time, long time, long term trades like these, um, I don't expect you guys to keep checking on the trade like every, I don't know, three or four times a day, you know, probably just have to check, check it like once a day and things like that, you know, at the end of the day. So if you guys see something like that, you know, like key levels, round levels, psychological level, just pay attention to it, okay? So personally for me, I would, I would want to, you know, hold on to it and see whether it actually hits the TP level or the stop loss level. Okay. Also for my journalist uh, journal journaling purpose. Okay. So what happened was that um last Wednesday, yeah, last Wednesday, just before the Bank of Canada monetary policy meeting, okay, I actually decided to close the trade. So um as you guys can see, the trade was closed at this candle. Okay, this um this doji-like candle over here. But before, that was actually before it shot up, okay, by an additional, I think, yeah, some 80 pips, 80, 90 pips or so, because due to the um, Bank of Canada's um, decision to hold monetary policy unchanged and no tapering was carried out, okay, because of the recent um, um, spike in cases in Canada, okay? So, which led to a um, slight, I would say, a, a temporary a weakening of the Canadian dollar, okay? Hence, dollar kept strengthened, right? So I decided to close in case, you know, things happen, right? What if they tapered? If they, if they were to taper, then, you know, chances are dollar cat is going to go down and then back to my break-even level, my entry level. Then I wouldn't be making any profits, right? So I decided to close my trade for 120 pips. And then, yeah, after the announcement, it went back up, okay? And then eventually it came back down, you know, because, because of oil prices and things like that, right? So um, at the moment, it's actually going down. So I guess the most, um, the key takeaway from this, um, the main point I would say, okay, that I would highlight from this trade idea is that um, don't just um, follow strictly to, you need not have to, okay? I mean, of course, with um, sufficient data from back testing, you can actually be more convinced to hold your trade, let it run all the way to, um, the TP level and things like that, okay? But um, in this case, it shows that, you know, the TP level just couldn't make it, right? right? You know, there was a test once, twice, and, you know, this comes close to that key level of 1.51, and it just come back down, right? So, and most importantly, this whole trade took like one month, all right? I mean, if you guys can actually, you know, afford to go through this whole roller coaster, you know, up and down and almost hitting stop loss over here and then up again and come back down again, then yeah, sure, by all means, go ahead and hold a trade, you know. But if not, you guys may want to consider, you know, closing for um, a strong reason, for decent reasons like Bank of Canada or, you know, testing but failed to break above a key level in order to secure your profits, right? Okay. So um, that's the end of my sharing today. Um, yeah, I'll be sharing more trade ideas this week, you know, knowing that there's not many monet there's not any monetary policy meeting going on. So um, with that, I'll hand it back to Scott.